Hello everyone, welcome back to my channel. I'm Ashley and today we're going to be doing my July edition of Temptation Station. If you've never seen Temptation Station before, it is simply where we sit down, scroll through Trend Mood's Instagram page together, look at all of the new and upcoming makeup releases and talk about my thoughts on any of them that catch my attention. So let's go ahead and start off with the one that is getting the most heavily roasted and for very good reason, let's talk about Hourglass. Hourglass and the new eyeshadow singles release. So when I first saw the picture of these eyeshadows, I thought, oh, those are kind of a neat shape. Like I liked the design of the pans themselves. I liked the fact that you could kind of curate your own palette. I thought that was fun. It reminded me a lot of Buxom. That was kind of Buxom's big thing with eyeshadows a uh, number of years ago. But I know Makeup Forever has done that as well. Like it's not a new concept, but I liked the way that aesthetically it looked. So I was like, okay, none of the shades seemed all that groundbreaking, but I was like, I could, I could see myself giving that a try until, until the price. Who are you? Who are you? Um, to get a five pan eyeshadow palette is a whopping $161. Like you guys know I have expensive eyeshadow. I have Natasha Denona. I have Pat McGrath. I have never purchased any of them at full price, but I have them. And for Hourglass to come out and be like, yes, we are in that category. They are trying to place themselves into a Tom Ford type of category. And even Tom Ford, if you want to take kind of the the price point of the quads, which are, if I'm not mistaken, $88. So let's just go ahead and pretend that there's a five pan. If the math holds true, that's still less than $161. Like, who are you? So not going to be trying those out, but as I said, the aesthetic of the the product itself, I like. I just I don't I don't know. Like on their board when they sat down and said, "Let's do the market research. Let's figure out how we're going to price these things." How did they justify this? Like how? I can't imagine that their ingredients are something that would validate that price point. Like I am not the first to rant about this or to even, you know, talk about it with kind of the, you know, mind blown emoji going on, but like, who are you? <laughs> who are you? Oh my goodness. So one of the things that I kind of got a little bit excited about is initially the first time I saw the picture of the new lacquer pots from KKW I didn't realize that they were for lips because I just saw the picture I thought that they were going to be similar to my beloved Becca under eye corrector they're not uh, but if they were that would have been something that might have gotten me to actually purchase something from the Kardashian Jenner family, but they're not, they're just lip products. And I don't really understand um, potted lip color products because I feel like in this day and age, when A, most of us are still wearing masks when we're going out anyway, so lip color is not a massive priority, but when we are wearing lip color, there are easy application formats. I don't understand why we have gone back to, and I get that the 90s and the, the 2000s, the Y2K look, all that stuff is coming back in, but I feel like as consumers, we have surpassed putting lip potted lip colors. Like lip balms are, are a different category, but lip colors, I just, I don't understand that move at all. Ooh, so let's talk for a moment about Maybelline. Maybelline is actually coming out with some new Instant Age Rewind Instant Perfectors 4-in-1 Glow Makeup. And I'm super curious about these because at first I thought that they were supposed to be actual foundations and I was like, okay, I mean, I guess we're taking the um, concealer and we're just putting it in a bigger container. Because I'm not going to lie, 
I have oftentimes just kind of smeared that all over my face, blended it out, and I've enjoyed the results. But I don't think that's actually what this is. I've actually seen this. Um, people have said or have tried to compare it to the Charlotte Tilbury, the, oh, uh, whatever her, is it uh, Hollywood Flawless Filter? I'll put a picture of it up along with the, the product of Maybelline's itself. But if that's the case, I'm very interested. I'm very interested because I love the effect of that. I just don't love the price of that. So that would be a really neat thing to have on the market that would be far more accessible and at a better price point than the Charlotte Tilbury. I think that that could be really exciting. So that is definitely on my radar for sure. That is on my radar. Oh, Uma Beauty. Mm, you know I love me some Uma Beauty. They have released a globe, uh, High Life Highlighter and Contour Face Palettes. I, I definitely, definitely, I have no need for it, but my eye is on it because they look so incredibly beautiful and oof, I really think that that is going to end up coming home with me one of these days and well end up in my online basket and being delivered to my home but yeah those look beautiful those look so 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 beautiful and really do I really do want one I don't understand though Urban Decay coming out with the Naked 3 Mini. I don't understand, like, is it a beautiful color story? Absolutely, the Naked 3 is a beautiful color story, but that came out how many years ago? Like five? I, I just don't understand this move right here. Like, I almost feel like Urban Decay was like, well, we really need to put something out. It's been, I don't know, six weeks since our last release. Cause you know, makeup brands are constantly releasing things to try to one up each other and to stay kind of in the social media focus for videos like this one, to be quite frank with you. Um, so I feel like they were like, oh my gosh, we need to put something out. And so they put this, they, they threw this together and put it out. These are shades that they were already making. If they're, I'm pretty sure they're the same as the ones that are in the actual Naked 3. You know, these are shades that they were already making the style of component is one that they were already making. Like, I feel like this was a really like, fast and easy release for them so that they could stay trending, so to speak. And it just seems so odd, especially because they have newer releases in their, in their naked line that are far more relevant that I think would work a lot better. I mean, their most recent one was the Wild West palette. They could have done that with this. And I think that the reception on it would be much more positive. I just, I feel like it's a lazy release. I do. I feel like it is a, a lazy release. Oh, Dior. I don't think I own anything from Dior. I don't think I've actually purchased anything from Dior. I might have like some sample lip products or something, but they have some new highlighters that they just look pretty. Are they, do they look like they are revolutionary or groundbreaking or unique? No, but they're pretty and the packaging is pretty and I am not going to buy one because that just seems ridiculous, but they're really pretty and if one just like showed up at my house one day, I would not be mad about it. They're, they're really pretty packaging and we all know packaging is a big draw, let's be honest. Physicians Formula, ooh, they're coming out with some new bronzers. I love them. I love them. Now. Don't come for me in the comments. I know that their shade range is deplorable. And honestly, this in my opinion is a missed opportunity at expanding that shade range. Like you've got four here. You've got the donut, you've got cake, you've got cookie, and you've got coffee. So the coffee one does seem like it has the deepest of them. I don't know how deep that is. I have not seen it in person. Uh, but it seems like it is, uh, I'm not going to say attempting because I don't really know, but it, it's the furthest towards the richer shade range there. I don't know if it's enough. Probably not. Let's be honest if we're speaking historically. But I feel like with this sort of like baked goods kind of theme, you had so many opportunities. 
you could have done, for instance, a um, a red velvet, because that'll give you nice a nice rich sort of product with lovely reddish undertones. I think that would have been amazing. Like when you're talking about baked goods, it's endless. It's endless. And I just, I feel like it was a massively missed opportunity to finally give some of the inclusivity that people have been asking for for a really long time. So I do want to put that out there 100% from the get-go. Physician's formula does work for me. And so I am interested in this release. However, again, I 100% acknowledge and recognize that it does not work for many of the consumer population and that that is terrible, especially in this day and age. It's just, it's terrible. And yeah, like I feel guilty about liking this release and wanting it. Bite Beauty. Bite Beauty is bringing back their lipsticks and they are reformulated since the entire brand is going through a reformulation process. I always enjoyed the Mousse Bouche lipsticks, so I'm trying so hard not to purchase lip products because you guys know my collection is completely out of control as it is. But these look gorgeous um, and I'm really excited that they're bringing lipsticks back into their collection because they've been missed. They've been missed. Um, also, ColourPop has come out with glossy lip stains. Those, those I'm very curious about because as I've talked about before, um, as much as I love wearing lip color with my life being what it is right now, I don't wear it as often because I don't like getting it all over my kids and, and everything else. So a glossy lip stain sounds so exciting. I'm actually really very, very interested in that. Oh, Jacqueline Cosmetics. <sighs> Since we've been ranting about lack of inclusivity, uh, yeah. And uh, the reason for this abominable shade range in Jacqueline Cosmetics' new bronzer line, she doesn't know anybody. So, <laughs> so infuriating. I mean, A, you came from YouTube. You know people. You know people. But more importantly, more importantly, and what I haven't really heard addressed is that this is not just a person, right? This is a company. I don't care who you know and who you don't know. You hire somebody. You hire somebody to help you with the formulation. You hire somebody to help you with the shade range. You hire people to test the products. You know, this isn't me, you know, coming up with a new cupcake recipe in my kitchen and asking my friends what they think. No, this is a company. That is the, I'm sorry, I don't typically swear on my channel, but that's the most bullshit excuse I have heard. I didn't know anybody. Give me a break. No, absolutely not. Absolutely not. Okay, so super curious and interested, Flower Beauty is releasing basically an aerosol powder, like a setting powder, but in a spray bottle. <laughs> I'm so curious. I'm so curious. I almost feel like I can see so many things. Like, I, is it gonna coat everything in my room with a fine dusting of powder? How could it not? Is it gonna get in my hair? Is it basically dry shampoo for your face? I have so many questions. I'm so curious. I'm so curious. Oh, Besame. They release such just gorgeous, gorgeous collections. And you know, one of the things that I really respect about Besame is that when they do these collaborations and they do these releases, this one is the one for their collaboration with Disney's Mulan. They have such an attention to detail and they really strive to put out something that is just beautiful and functional instead of trying to put out a massive collection, right? Because this has just a couple of pieces in it and it looks stunning. I really, I, I don't have any of them because I, I've been trying really hard not to purchase too much, but they are so well done and I really, really appreciate them a lot. 
And I feel like everybody is partnering with Disney these days uh, because there is a new release from oh, Revolution, which, which I Heart Revolution. They've got like a couple of brands underneath their umbrella. But this one is from Disney's Aladdin. Again, really pretty. I'm not going to buy it because I don't need any of it, but really, really pretty. Really, really pretty. Uh, something that I did buy. I had a moment of weakness and I ordered, I made a ColourPop order. Yeah, I, I bought the new Powder Power Puff. What the heck is this called? Powder Puff Girl release. I just bought the eyeshadow palette and it's the shimmers that did me in. The shimmers are what did me in and I bought it. I'll let you know if I regret it when it gets here. <laughs> I'll let you know. Uh, but I mean, it's definitely very different from most of what I have. It's very brightly colored. But for some reason, those shimmers, they just, they spoke to me. They spoke to me. So I have no illusions that for me, this is going to be a standalone palette. It's going to be an accent palette for sure. But I'm excited to give it a try. I really, I mean, even that blue in there is one that I'm like, I'm excited to put that on my eyes. So hopefully I'm not disappointed when it arrives because it's, it's really pretty. Oh, I straight up texted my friend when I saw this. Why are we talking about Max Christmas release in July? Like, I mean, they look really pretty. I'm not gonna pretend that they don't, but it's July. No, I don't wanna, be, I, I don't need Christmas sneaks yet. Let's get through summer. Let's get through summer. I know that they do tend to sneak earlier and earlier every year, but I feel like July is too early. Just like I feel like putting out Christmas decorations in stores before Halloween is too early. I feel like this is too early. Don't come for me in the comments. I know everybody loves Christmas. ColourPop's new little quads for their ice cream scoop collection, I think are adorable. I really do. The one that I was honestly most contemplating getting was like rainbow sprinkles or something like that until I found out that it was pressed glitter. And then I was like, well, no, that's not happening. But um, there, there was one that I did almost pick up, but I, I ended up not because I know myself. I don't use small palettes. I just don't. I have a couple of quads. I have a couple of quints. Uh, even six pan palettes I don't tend to use because there's just not enough in there for me to choose from. Like I look at it and I only see like one vision and I don't love that. So the only time that it would really get used is if it gets pulled into one of my project pans. So I didn't end up getting one, but they're super cute. They are super, super cute. Ooh, another one that I'm actually really curious about. I'm gonna try really hard not to purchase because it is a lip product, uh, but that is actually from KVD. They are releasing Vegan Butter Lipstick, Epic Kiss Nourishing Vegan Butter Lipstick. I love the packaging. I love the concept of it. I really wanna try them. Uh, again, I'm gonna try really, really hard not to because I have no need for new lip products and I've been trying really, really hard this year to limit, not eliminate, but limit the purchases that I make in the lip product category, but I'm really intrigued, really intrigued by those. And then finally, um, while this probably won't matter for me, but did you see that Ulta is going to be in some cases kind of merging with Target, like having an, an Ulta inside of a Target, kind of like Sephora has with JCPenney's and actually is going to be having with some Kohl's locations. So I know that that won't matter for me because literally like my Target and my Ulta are right next door to each other. So that wouldn't make any sense at all. But I think that's really cool. I mean, Target has been really just upping their game over and over and over again. And I feel like this is a very natural sort of um, partnership and I'm really excited for it. Like I said, I, I don't think it'll matter for my Target, but I think it's a really cool thing. And I know people have been kind of knocking Sephora for coming into Kohl's because it just doesn't feel like a parallel sort of partnership but I have a Kohl's in that same shopping area. So if there was a Sephora that moved in with it, I would not be mad about it. Um, I, I realize that that's kind of a ridiculous sentiment to have, but 
Yeah, I, I think that would be kind of cool. But I like I like that that's happening for Ulta and for for uh, Target because I think that that is a very natural sort of partnership there. So those are my thoughts on everything that is currently on Trend Moods page. And as I said, I have done some shopping this month. I did have a haul that I posted very recently and I did, yeah, I did make that ColourPop order. There were a couple of things in there. So I definitely picked up the Powderpuff Girls palette and I did pick up one of their glossy lip stains because I'm just super, super curious about it. But yeah, so July was definitely uh, a little bit of a spendy month for me. I need to pull it back in because I feel like overall I've done reasonably well this year with um, being careful about what I bring into my life and into my collection. So we'll see how the rest of the year <laughs> goes. I always tend to do really well at the beginning and then it's like the damn breaks. And I'm like, I must have everything. Um, so really working on <laughs> <laughs> not making that the case this year. What are some of the things that you have your eyes on? What are some of the releases that you're interested in? I'm very curious to know. Make sure to let me know in the comments below. Let's start a conversation. As always, everything that I am wearing will be linked in the description box below. And if you have not yet subscribed, I hope that you'll consider doing so. Thank you so much for spending some time with me today. I hope that you are having an amazing day. And I will see you next time. Bye.